factoring the most important concept in financial management for intermediates our shiram is that to explain about factoring concept please come thank you sir good morning uh, i'm here to explain about factoring uh, it comes under working capital management factor so let's assume that uh, you run a business and you require uh, working capital to run your day to day operations uh, the most uh, uh, possible uh, solution would be to approach a bank for a loan so what happens is uh, uh let's assume okay, for any loan you need to give collateral or a security right so now i have to hit on additional topics like uh, pledge and mortgage also so uh, for any collateral you either pledge your asset or you give your asset as a mortgage so what's the difference between a pledge and a pledge and a mortgage they sound similar but uh, the major difference being a pledge is for a movable asset whereas a mortgage is for an immovable asset so since this chapter con- uh, is under working capital management it mainly involves around current assets so current assets is a immovable uh, sorry is a movable asset so you end up pledging your asset for loan so let's say that you pledge your uh, debtors for loan and debtors as in your bills receivable for loan and uh, you approach a bank for finance so what happens is uh, the bank initially scrutinizes your debtors because there's a chance that you can have your sister concerns or related parties to have to just draw up a fake or not fake uh, an unreal uh, uh, receivable so that to inflate your receivables so the bank it does it scrutinizes your uh, receivables and make sure that uh, unnecessary related party uh, bills receivables are removed and next up uh, the bank has to have an income on your on providing loan right so they get their source of income by way of interest commission and uh, uh, they take a reserve out of it so in uh, when you go to when you approach a bank for uh, your working capital requirement what they initially do is Uh, let's say your uh, amount of requirement is about 100 lakhs they uh, first they filter out your related party transactions next up they take a reserve as their uh, uh, safety net and next they take commission out of it and then the interest interest in such a transaction is on pre interest basis whereas they take interest up front rather than wait for the end of the period to get it done so these are the uh, income elements for the bank so why a factor because Uh, a bank is essentially an organized sector where you end up uh, having to go through a lot of procedures and uh, logistics and all that uh, so in order to cut short that procedure where you need immediate funds in the unorganized sector there is this person called a factor a factor is someone who essentially does the exact same thing but in a more easier and convenient way where you can get funds quickly so this is the uh, outline of uh, factoring so here there is a few more important points that we have to discuss one being uh, a factor and there are two types of factoring one is a disclosed factoring and undisclosed factoring so disclosed factoring is where uh, all the uh, parties involved in such an agreement are aware that all the parties as in uh, the borrower the factor and the bills receivable because basically you are pledging your bills receivable all these three parties are aware of such a factor agreement that is disclosed factoring whereas an undisclosed factoring any any or either one of these parties are not aware of the factor agreement needless to say it is only legal in india that uh, you go with factor uh, the disclosed factor and another uh, two, two types are we have recourse factoring and non recourse factoring uh, what is recourse and non recourse recourse is basically when you pledge your receivables to your bank uh, the bank actually uh, in case of uh, bad debt or where you where the receivables are not uh, ending up getting collected the bank takes part uh, takes the loss as a uh, their own loss so in such a case since the bank or the factor has more responsibility than more risk uh, the premium for such a factoring is already uh, is a little always higher than the non recourse factoring uh, so that's it uh, and uh, yeah so now to efficiently conclude uh, how to compute uh, how to see if factoring is viable for you or not you will have to uh, use this particular formula where it says uh, what is your cost of factoring so if i am a borrower what is my cost my cost is the income to the factor the income that i stated earlier saying that reserves commission and interest you aggregate them all but since these are costs see uh, it is not just a cost for you in entirety because you also end up saving on something for example uh, the factor does your credit management for you they collect receivables for you so essentially these are actually savings you don't have to keep a separate uh, team uh, that is responsible to go collect your receivables so in such cases Uh, hiring a factor can actually be beneficial for you so you'll have to also find out the savings that you incur on the savings that you can make on uh, hiring a factor so when you're calculating your cost of factor make sure you subtract your savings that you also make that's only fair 
so your cost of factor divided by the actual amount that you get from the factor into 100 will give you the essential cost of factor if this is viable if whatever the essential or the final answer that you're getting is viable from any other source, uh, source of loan that you can you can always go for a factor thank you sir factoring both theory as well as practical problem important for your exam very nice thank you sir